Okay. Uh, this is the first classical problem from the uh, second midterm of 2024 of Phoenix 106. Now, in this problem, we have a cylindrical cable, but there is actually a hello part of this cable. We only have uh, some current through this annular region. So this is a cylindrical cable that's actually you know, uh, extending to infinity in this direction and that direction. The inner radius is A, the outer radius is B. Uh, the current is pointing towards us, towards us, and it is magnitude I. Okay. And they are asking for the magnetic field due to this configuration uh, within this uh, small inner radius A, between this A and B, and then for uh, outside of B. Okay. So this configuration, so this is part A, B, and C, but there are some arguments that are equally applicable to all parts. This configuration is cylindrical symmetric, and because this is you know, of, uh, consisting of, we can think of this as consisting of small uh, linear currents, the magnetic field has no way but to be circles. Okay? And these circles are going to be, the, the centers of these circles are going to be on the symmetry axis of this uh, current distribution. So all our magnetic field, if it exists, should look like circles. Uh, they have no poles. The magnetic field has no monopoles, so it doesn't terminate or originate at any point. They are just going to be closed loops. Because of the cylindrical symmetry, they are going to be closed circles. So we start with the part A, the inner part, and this is an application of Ampere's law, of course. So let's write down Ampere's law over some closed Amperian loop. The line integral of the uh, magnetic field is going to be uh, mu zero times the current enclosed. Now, if I drew my Amperian loop to be like a small circle. Here, the direction of the current is this way, so for convenience, I also take my direction of the Amperian loop uh, such that if any current were passing, it will be in the positive sense, but there is no current passing here. Over this Amperian loop, the magnetic field has to be along this dl, so this dot product becomes a simple product. And then, because it's cylindrical symmetric, the magnetic field must be constant. I can take this out. L. And this is, of course, just, uh, if this is R radius, this is just 2 pi R. On the right-hand side, we have zero, because there is no current enclosed within this smaller loop, then magnetic field is simply zero. Okay. Now, for part B, when our R is in between A and B, we proceed exactly the same way, except we draw a bigger Amperian loop. And again, I'm going to choose this in such a way that the current passing through this loop is going to make a positive contribution. So these steps are still correct, except the right-hand side is not going to be the current. Uh, it's, it's not going to be zero, but we have to calculate the current enclosed. And I think the easiest way to calculate the current enclosed is to you know, consider this region, the area of that region, and then multiply it by the current density. So what is the current density? Let's write this down. The current density is, of course, the current divided by area. This is the current. The area is pi b squared minus pi a squared. So this is pi b squared minus a squared. Okay. All right. And now we have to look at the area of this region. That region is, of course, uh, not the full, full thing. It's going to be part of this. but. So this is a full, let's say, a region that we are interested in is going to be pi square, r square minus a square. And if you multiply these two, the pi's are going to go away. The uh, total current is going to be, so it's a mu zero here. The total current is the current times b square minus, sorry, r square minus a square over b square minus a square. Okay. And then we have to move uh, the 2 pi r to the other side, and we are going to have our answer. So we can just this, and this is going to be the magnetic field. Okay. It has a somewhat complicated dependence on r. It's not just 1 over r, because we have r squared over here. But otherwise, uh, this is a perfectly satisfactory answer. Now, this was for part B. Okay. For part C, we, of course, are going to draw an Amperian loop that's outside, that has a radius r 
larger than B. Right? So this is going to be our R now. Again, everything here is going to apply. We end up with you no know, B two pi R equals mu naught I enclosed, except in this case, I enclose is trivial, right? This Amperian loop, if again, take it this way, uh, is going to have uh, the, t the total current that's in the problem, that's just I, so our current is mu zero over two pi R times I. And this is a result that you could write down without actually using Ampere's law, even though uh, you have to because the uh, problem explicitly says using Ampere's law, because this is cylindrical symmetric. As long as it's cylindrical symmetric, you can imagine that all this current is actually concentrated in a single line, and this is, of course, the magnetic field of a single infinite current carrying wire.